And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 to 2, 4. According to the studies of Zacharias Sitchin, there is a twelfth planet in our solar system, known to scientists as the possible planet X. This planet is called Nibiru, and is situated somewhere beyond Pluto. This planet, unlike the other planets in our solar system, has an elliptical orbit and moves clockwise rather than counterclockwise. It was a collision of Nibiru with another planet in our solar system, Maildek, which created Earth. Nibiru's orbit passes through our solar system only once every 3,600 years, which is equal to one Nibiru year. This controversial theory is based on Sitchin's interpretation of ancient Sumerian texts, with its origin in the Bible, in the Book of Genesis. Sitchin has spent decades as an archaeologist and historian in the Middle East, researching ancient writings from the Sumerian civilization into a five-part paperback series, The Earth Chronicles, documenting the Nibirian interaction on Earth in ancient times. This planet is inhabited by the Anunnaki, the Nephilim, giants in the Bible, those who from heaven to Earth came. They landed on Earth, colonized it, mining the Earth for gold and other minerals, establishing a spaceport in what today is the Iraq-Iran area, and lived in a kind of idealistic society as a small colony. They returned when Earth was more populated and genetically interfered in our indigenous DNA to create a slave race to work their mines, farms, and other enterprises in Samaria, which was the so-called cradle of civilization in outdated pre-1980s school history texts. They created man, Homo sapiens, through genetic manipulation with themselves and ape man Homo erectus. If the Anunnaki created us, who created the Anunnaki? In Lil and Enki, two governors of Earth sent from Nibiru to rule Earth, were responsible for all this power and control. They gave the ancient Sumerians their architectural, agricultural, astronomical, and cultural training in exchange for labor and gifts to the gods, in the form of a lot of mining, food, and material goods. Therefore the Nibirians themselves no longer had to physically work on Earth. The Nibirians disguised themselves as fish humans, lion humans, bird humans, and other creatures to get the people to worship them as token gods, something that Moses violently opposed. Later, the Pleiadians, who were involved in Egypt's Third Golden Age, attempted to end the worship of the many Nibiruan and Syrian gods in these lands with the One God concept. However, wars always resulted from these differences of belief systems, and the Syrians and Nibirians thrived on all the humans fighting each other instead of the gods who were the real enemies behind the scenes. Every 3,600 years a major event occurred on Earth that was well documented by ancient and modern historians. The Great Flood of Religious referred to an attempt to destroy the slave races of humanity by the Nibirians because they have rebelled against their leaders, gods, from Nibiru. Enlil and Enki were involved in a heated dispute over whether to destroy or preserve the slave races and this power struggle resulted in ancient wars. Zakaria Sitchin's work is dazzling, credible, provocative, exciting and highly important in finding our real past, and therefore our real future. It is based on the premise that mythology is not fanciful but the repository of ancient memories, that the Bible ought to be read literally as a historic, scientific document, and that ancient civilizations were the product of knowledge brought to earth by the Anunnaki, those who from heaven to earth came. One astounding assertion after another has made Sitchin the most controversial writer of our time because he challenges everything we thought we knew about human civilization. It's easy to dismiss Sitchin's research in the same way that other people dismiss UFOs, Eric von Daniken and countless other researchers who claim to have found evidence for extraterrestrial visitors to this planet. 
But Sitchin is well aware of this devil's advocacy, and vaporizes the arguments of skeptics with solid scholarship, including the most rigorous translations of Sumerian text, Vedic tales and excerpts from the original Greek and Hebrew versions of the Bible. This ability to translate many languages is no small achievement. Those of us who will never possess the ability to decipher 6,000-year-old clay tablets must trust that Sitchin has done his job accurately. But his sources reveal an utter integrity, including the finest, most respected citations and references imaginable. According to Zechariah Sitchin's ancient astronaut theory, the Anunnaki were an extraterrestrial group of alien gods from the planet Nibiru. The name Anunnaki means children of the Sumerian Supreme God, a new on Earth key, which suggests that they were ancient astronauts that traveled from their own home planet Nibiru to Earth. The Anunnaki were descended from their father, Anu or An who was the supreme ruler on their home planet Nibiru. The Anunnaki pantheon was made up a pantheon of twelve gods under the leadership of the supreme god Anu. In short, the Anunnaki gods were ranked as follows. The same pantheon of ancient astronaut gods under different names may have spread to other civilizations, namely, Greece, India and Mesoamerica. Why did the Anunnaki gods leave Nibiru? According to the ancient astronaut theory, the Anunnaki left their home planet Nibiru in search of mono-atomic gold which was needed to repair their deteriorating atmosphere. When did the Anunnaki ancient astronauts arrive? The Anunnaki are supposed to have arrived on Earth approximately 450,000 years ago. Where was the first Anunnaki settlement? The first ancient astronaut settlement built by the Anunnaki was the base station at Eden, Garden of Eden, with the first Anunnaki city-state being established Eridu. The major activity of the Anunnaki was the establishment of a civilization ruled by ancient astronauts which involved gold mining operations, establishment of city-states in Sumer, Mesoamerica, the Indus and Nile valleys, the creation of man through DNA engineering, the introduction of civilization, religion and culture, the pyramid wars of supremacy amongst themselves for control of the city-states in which humans first became involved and the concept of divine kingship was introduced, the nuclear destruction of the Sumerian civilization followed by their eventual departure after the Anunnaki nuclear war and the conquest of Babylon by Cyrus the Great. Where did the Anunnaki mine for gold? The first ancient astronaut gold mining operations were conducted in the waters of Mesopotamia around the settlement at Eridu, however, the quantities proved insufficient and the Anunnaki gold mining operations were moved to southern Africa. When, why and how did the Anunnaki create man? Mankind was created by the Anunnaki gods around 400,000 years ago by fusing the DNA of Homo erectus with Anunnaki DNA to create the first human Adama prototype following the Ajiji rebellion. The Ajiji had previously been tasked to undertake the gold mining work on behalf of the ancient astronauts, but the labor proved too much and they rebelled on account of their hard toil. The solution that was proposed by the Anunnaki god Enki was to create a genetic hybrid slave of human beings to take over the work of the Ajiji. What contributions did the Anunnaki make to civilization? The ancient astronaut gods are the Elohim and Nephilim of the Hebrew Bible, and they developed the Earth through a combination of technical prowess in matters such as building, astronomy, construction, writing. The Anunnaki also devised ways to manage the human population through a sophisticated system of propaganda which now forms the basis of modern religion. The origins of civilization and religion can thus be traced to the civilization established by ancient astronauts in ancient Sumer. The Anunnaki and the Great Deluge the human population in the Sumerian city-states ruled by various Anunnaki gods eventually expanded beyond what was desirable to Enlil, the leader of the ancient astronauts on Earth. 
An opportunity to reduce the human population was soon presented to the Anunnaki by a natural disaster in the form of a natural tidal wave that would cause a great flood or deluge due to Nibiru's close orbit to the Earth. However, Enki chief scientist of the Anunnaki gods who had created humans warned them of the coming disaster by instructing that an ark be built. Mankind was thus saved from total destruction by the Anunnaki but this caused a further rift between the two ancient astronaut factions led by the chief Anunnaki princes Enki and Enlil. What were the causes of the Anunnaki Wars? The rivalry between Anunnaki princes Enki and Enlil can be understood in terms of the Anunnaki rules of succession. Prior to their arrival from Nibiru, the ancient astronauts followed certain rules of succession. In terms of these Anunnaki rules, the successor to the king had to be of the purest blood. Where an Anunnaki king did not bear a son with his royal spouse, then his oldest male child by a concubine would qualify as his successor. However, if the Anunnaki king's official spouse subsequently bore him a son, then the son from the official spouse would be his successor. In the case of Enki and Enlil we had a situation where Enki who was born of Anu's relationship with a concubine was initially the official successor, however, when Anu's spouse later bore a son Enlil, Enki was replaced as the official successor in accordance with the Anunnaki succession rules. Although Enki was obliged to accept Enlil as Anu's successor, he would express his frustration by opposing Enlil at every major turn starting with the Ajiji Rebellion, Garden of Eden Incident and then the Great Deluge, Nose Flood. The Ajiji Rebellion as stated above occurred when the Ajiji rebelled. According to the ancient astronaut hypothesis, the Ajiji Rebellion was part of a plot instigated by Enki to frustrate Enlil and place the gold mining operations of the Anunnaki under his sole control. Enki had secretly genetically engineered the Adamu to reproduce against the wishes of Enlil and the rest of the Anunnaki Council. According to the ancient astronaut hypothesis, Enki did this deliberately in order to hold Enlil and the rest of the Anunnaki to ransom as he would be in charge of the new labor force. As a result of the underlying Anunnaki succession tensions from Nibiru which continued to play themselves eventually open war broke out between the Anunnaki factions of Enki and Enlil. According to the ancient astronaut hypothesis, these wars were called the First and Second Anunnaki Pyramid Wars, and they were fought in Egypt and the Sinai Peninsula. These Anunnaki wars eventually led to the culture of war being introduced to man, and the rise of Abraham, paving the way for the world's monotheistic religions. The other major consequence of the ancient astronaut wars was nuclear holocaust as shown in the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah resulting in the final destruction of the Sumerian civilization. When and why did the Anunnaki leave? In the end of days, Zechariah Sitchin uses the ancient astronaut theory to argue that the Anunnaki initially left for Mars after the destruction of the Sinai Peninsula spaceport and the rise of Babylon under Marduk using the Mesoamerican bases at Nazca and Teotihuacan. However, the Enlilite Anunnaki faction represented by the Moon God, Sin subsequently returned replacing Marduk as the chief Anunnaki god of Babylon under King Nabonidus. The response of Marduk and the Enkiites was to recruit Cyrus the Great who then defeated Nabonidus and restored Marduk as king of Babylon. According to the ancient astronaut hypothesis, it is from the Anunnaki's role in the creation of the Persian Empire that the later empires of ancient history such as the Hittites, Romans and Greeks were descended. What is the legacy of the Anunnaki gods? The legacy of the Sumerian Anunnaki gods has found its way into modern religion, particularly through shortened versions of the Sumerian and later Babylonian texts such as the Enuma Elish creation epic in the Hebrew Bible. This in turn has formed the bedrock of the world's leading monotheistic religions, starting with Judaism, followed by Christianity and lastly Islam. The ancient astronaut theory has argued that the legacy of the Anunnaki goes as far as the creation of man and civilization itself as we know it. Along the way, the memory of the Sumerian Anunnaki gods and their saga on Earth has been lost to the mists of time, but their enduring legacy continues to thrive to this day because it may be the ancient astronauts of Sumer that provided humans with the blueprint of how to create a civilization.